Okay. So now it's uh, 20 past four. I guess we should start, could start now. So hello everybody. I would like to welcome you to my uh, talk about OpenStack at large retail enterprise, Boone or Bain. So first of all, I, I would like to provide you some information about me, about uh, the company, who is Metronome. So my name is Thomas Longwitz. I'm the product owner of uh, Compute Cloud, a product uh, within Metronome. I'm working with Metronome in its uh, precursor now for 16 years. I started my career uh, in Metronome um, as a network specialist. So I was responsible for more or less 12 years for our wide area network, local area network. Um, yeah, so I'm one of these guys who is always guilty if the application is not working. Yeah? The network is guilty. Um, I started, uh, the open st started with the OpenStack project in uh, 2014. So then we started it as a project. Now it uh, became a product, and I'm the product owner for that uh, OpenStack product. We call it Compute Cloud. In my free time, I'm a volunteer at the German Federal Agency of Technical Relief, and I am a metronomian. But what does it mean, metronomian? Who is metronome? So for those of you who are from, from Germany, metronome is not the railway company. Metronome is uh, the tech unit uh, of Metro, a leading international wholesale company and food specialist. So we say, our slogan is, we set the pace in food and uh, technology. And we do have uh, roughly around 2,000 people around the world, mainly working in Berlin, Düsseldorf, Hanover, Brasov, and Bucharest. Of course, we, we do have an ambitious uh, vision. So we want to revolutionize uh, the entire industry with our services and digital, uh, digital solutions, sorry. Yeah, Boone and Bain, why? What do I mean with that? Bain, yeah, because our previous structure uh, of Metro IT was totally vendor driven. So, of course, we used open source uh, products, open source projects, but more like niche products. Um, we were not really contributing to any open source community or stuff like that. And um, we had a lot of very good uh, different departments, different teams, but unfortunately they were more acting like uh, silos. So within these teams, if you requested a solution, if you requested a product, for what reason ever, within that teams everything was working pretty smoothly. If it comes to its borders, um, we lost a lot of time. So from our point of view, that was quite inefficient. What we see is that the world is changing, and especially in, in uh, the IT, is changing very, very fast. So from, from our point of view, IT becomes um, consumable like electricity. So what the users expect from IT is that it is simply working. Like electricity, when you just plug in your power supply to, uh, to the power plug, and everything is working. You don't care about what is needed behind that. You just expect that it is working. That's why we, uh, why we are changing our culture and mindset. And if you compare that to the history of uh, metronome and its uh, precursors, you see that this is a huge chain, uh, change we are driving. Boone. Cloud is uh, becoming more and more important from our point of view in the IT market. Um, in future, we will see much more features and solutions which are only available uh, in the cloud. Uh, more and more companies are trying to uh, sell their products within their own cloud, not, not as an on-premise installation anymore. From our point of view, um, the hybrid cloud approach will be the future. So we as a company, we are using either the, a public cloud environment as well as a uh, private internal cloud environment. Um, 
using a public cloud, from our point of view, brings uh, the flexibility. Um, because the, the big public cloud providers, they are developing and inventing new features uh, pretty fast. That's something we cannot compete with. So we cannot say, okay, we can do the same like, uh, like the uh, big public cloud providers do. But on the other hand, not all data can or should be stored within a public cloud environment due to legal requirements, due to internal policies, data privacy, data protection, whatever. So from, from, uh, our, from my point of view, in using an internal cloud-based uh, infrastructure as a service provides the safety and then a good alternative to pl public cloud providers. OpenStack and cloud business forces us to change our culture and mindset. And we, and especially I do, really appreciate that because I you know, do believe that this is the right way we have to go to. OpenStack is, an open, um, is open and provides us the open infrastructure we need. And we are pretty happy with that. But what are the advantages of a private cloud? So first of all, everything is consumable as a self-service, so it's easy to start. It's fully integrated into our corporate network, so we do not have any connectivity issues. We do take care about the data protection and data privacy, and we are cost effective. And we do provide a pay-per-use model. Um, consume infrastructure, what does it mean? So everything should be consumable as a self-service. So then the user should not request anything by a form or something like this. So it should be available by an API or UI. As of today, a tenant um, has to be requested by a web form that, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, as of today. And um, we will create the users in OpenStack. From that point on, everything is in the hand of, of our uh, customer. So everything can be controlled by the customer. What we are doing is we are currently working on an uh, internal uh, shop system to provide even projects in, in OpenStack uh, in an automated uh, way. Uh, we do have some ideas on how to implement it, and it will be based, fully based on open source software. The POC is not started yet, but we will work on that. The idea from, for, for us is that from, for a customer, for a developer, for instance, it should be very easy from an idea to start testing or developing something within less than five minutes. Fully integrated into our network, so our environments, our um, internal cloud environments are fully integrated into our internal network. How did we do this? So we. When we started with, with OpenStack, we said, OK, we want to start like a greenfield approach. So we did not try to integrate an OpenStack environment into our in internal existing system landscape. That's why we created a dedicated backbone uh, for these cloud environments. We call it an inter-cloud backbone. Um, to this inter-cloud backbone, we have connected our internal environments as well as public cloud environments. To be able to connect to uh, existing resources in our classical data center, uh, we do have multiple connection points between our inter-cloud backbone and the metro backbone. Metro does provide, uh, does operate several uh, data centers across the world. Two of them are here in uh, Germany, in Dusseldorf and Frankfurt. So I draw it here as an example with Dusseldorf and Frankfurt. So we do have two connection points between Dusseldorf and um, between the intercloud backbone and uh, the metro backbone. So everything is highly redundant. Data protection and data privacy. Um, our cloud environments, our OpenStack environments, is for metro only. So we are talking about um, company internal applications and company internal data. 
all hardware is located in metronome uh, data centers or data centers which are operated by metronome, managed by metronome. So we have the full physical access control to the hardware. Uh, we do not have any issues in terms of GDPR with uh, external service providers or something like this, as everything is operated by us and no external partner has um, access to our hardware. We uh, strongly recommend uh, full data encryption to all our customers, to all our tenants. But it is in their responsible, uh, responsibility to decide whether they need data encryption or not. We do provide block and object storage, and um, everything is provided in the context of the project. So we do not provide um, any shared storage for them. Local storage volumes uh, will be overwritten when uh, the uh, entire instance is deleted. We are working on um, a full data encryption on hardware level either for, for the local storage as well as uh, for our block storage. Cost effectiveness. Um, Metronome is a non-profit um, unit of Metro. So we are charging only for our uh, costs. We do not make any profit. We reduce the hardware costs dramatically by standardizing our hardware flavors. So in fact, uh, we as a, a compute cloud team, we do, um, we do have five different uh, hardware flavors. We charge our tenants uh, by a pay-per-use model. That's different from what we did in, in the past, where a customer was uh, requesting resources, and he had to pay for the resources, um, even if he uh, did not need the full amount of resources. So our smallest unit for our paper use model is one hour, and we charge for instances, storage, and public floating IPs, because we do provide to our tenants uh, two different kind of uh, floating IPs. One is an internal and 10.x network, and uh, one is a public certified IP address network. So our open stack environments are based in three data centers across the world, Dusseldorf, Frankfurt, and Shanghai in China. We do have uh, currently six deployments in, in production. So two of them are based on the SUSE OpenStack Cloud uh, 5. So it's Juno-based. That's where these were our first productive environments uh, we implemented in 2015. At that point, we decided to uh, go with the commercial distribution to have the opportunity um, to call a service guy in case something fails. Um, after a while, we figured out that this distribution from SUSE is pretty fine. But unfortunately, at least at that point, it did not provide us the flexibility we needed. And uh, so we decided that our next release will be based on a full open source version. Um, Unfortunately, we cannot upgrade from the SUSE distribution to our internal um, OpenStack release. So we decided to um, decommission these two SUSE environments by the end of this year. We do have four productive environments based on OpenStack Ansible and Newton, two of them in Dusseldorf, one in Frankfurt, one in Shanghai, and we do have uh, the options uh, for two more in Moscow, Russia, and uh, Frankfurt. So a second one in Frankfurt. All of these um, environments are fully independent from each other. So even in terms of uh, switching hardware, everything is fully independent. The control plane is fully independent. Why? Because from our perspective, an application landscape, if you want to achieve a real high availability of the application landscape, it makes sense to uh, spread this application across multiple independent environments and to use either DNS load balancing or classical load balancers um, to um, use that ap application to make it available for, for the customer. So in case we do have an issue in one of our OpenStack environments, 
either it is a software issue, hardware issue, or even a, a human-driven error, we can be sure that this error, that this outage will not, be, uh, will not influence our other environments. That's why we um, spread it, uh, what, that's why we made them fully independent from each other. We do have some, uh, some prerequisites to our customers. So we, we always say to them that they should be prepared for any kind of failure. A VM could fail at any time. In our environments, we do not provide a high availability uh, VM. Even a compute host could uh, fail at any time. For those applications who cannot deal with that, we are the company still have our uh, classical virtualization platforms based on um, closed source products. Again, as I already said, we strongly recommend to our uh, customers to spread their applications across the environments if they need them in high availability mode. But we do not leave them alone. We try to, uh, we work with them and we educate them how to deal with infrastructure failures, how to design their application landscape. We do offer support and consultancy, but we do not implement anything for them. So they will not get a managed uh, solution from us. They will just get an unmanaged VM. The software we are using to provide our um, services is based on uh, Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Um, for OpenStack, we decided to go with OpenStack Ansible because at a very early time we decided uh, that Ansible we will, will be our leading automation system. And OpenStack Ansible provides us uh, at least a, a large amount of playbooks we need to deploy in the environment. Furthermore, it's uh, very easy to integrate this with uh, Ceph Ansible to provide the needed storage. For the OpenStack modules, we are using, from our point of view, only the base modules. So Keystone, Nova, Neutron, Horizon, Cinder, Swift, Glance, and Heat, Silometer. For, uh, and for the accounting, we did use until a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, in the past, we figured out that we had some uh, issues with Silometer. So Silometer was consuming a lot of CPU and a lot of RAM, and it uh, caused uh, serious issues in, in one of our environments because it was uh, simply struggling down the control nodes. And we uh, implemented and we developed a way how to gather these information we need for accounting purposes in a different way, which is much less um, performance consuming. In more detail, how our architecture is looking like, in our, from our point of view, we always uh, say for a single environment, um, the minimum amount is three racks. We spread everything across three racks. Why? Because we say, okay, a single rack is a maximum unit for a single environment which could fail, which is allowed to fail and everything should still be up and running. So we do have a per rack minimum one controller, one to end compute host, a monitor node for, with, with Rados gateway for the uh, storage, um, one to end com uh, storage host, and some free spare for top of the rack switches. Currently we are running with an end of uh, the row switch model, uh, switch concept, but uh, for, I think that um, we will change that in the future to, um, to a top of the rack switch uh, architecture with a sp uh, spine leaf architecture. This um, should provide us and will provide us a more redundancy in terms of any outages uh, of uh, the hardware. So our network design for, for the computers and for, uh, let's say for every host, so we do have, I, I said it already, five different hardware flavors. So we do have one flavor for the um, control and compute, uh, uh, control and monitor nodes. We do have uh, two different kind of uh, compute hosts and two different kind of storage hosts. For the network, um, from the network perspective, um, they decide, uh, they, um, 
they, they differ on only in terms of uh, 10G uh, network interfaces. So the compute monitor and, and uh, computers do only have two times 10G um, network interfaces, while the storage hosts uh, do have uh, four times 10G um, network interfaces. We separated uh, the storage traffic, which is coming from, from the VM, from the compute hosts, um, and the replication traffic within our um, Ceph cluster. Within the uh, um, OpenStack network, we are using a VXLAN and uh, DVR-based uh, infrastructure. Unfortunately, we figured out uh, one, two weeks ago um, a network performance issue um, caused by this architecture because we are uh, currently only able to reach um, 2.7 uh, gigabit when we are talking about a VM to VM communication if the VMs are spread across multiple hypervisors. And it will even get, get worse if, it's, uh, if the communication is using floating IPs. So we are currently working on that and to figure out a solution. <laughs> to give you some more um, numbers, what we are talking about, how big our um, environments are, and how, about how, uh, how many compute nodes we are talking, I provide you here some, some uh, more details. So actually, we, we are hosting 2,500 VMs on our environments. So that's roughly um, two-thirds of what we are hosting on our classical virtualization platform for our let's say, enterprise applications. What are our challenges? So what will come next? <laughs> Something very important for us is that we must be able to install a full environment at any time, even without internet. That's very important, why? When we build up the data center in, in uh, Shanghai in China, for everybody who uh, was in China someday, most of the people know that internet in China is totally different from what we know as internet here in Europe or in Northern America, or even in the rest of the world. So from, I always say uh, the Chinese internet is more like a big intranet, but it's not real internet. You cannot be sure that you can reach the resources you need at any time and the performance you may need. Furthermore, we do have um, a, a dev environment, so a hardware-based uh, development environment for our team. And uh, this dev environment, we want to install it automatically um, every night. Because every change we develop, every bug fix we are doing, will be tested with a, f new, with a fresh installation every night. So and latest at the next morning, we can see if this is working. So that's why we must be sure that we can install a full environment at any time. Um, and in the past, we always, uh, we often uh, hit some failures that we could not download the resources, the, the module versions have changed, the packages were not be available anymore, or something like this. That's why we will uh, mirror all the resources um, locally so that we can uh, install everything even without internet. The next big topic for us is building a CI-CD uh, uh, pipeline. And here I'm talking about uh, for OpenStack itself, not for the workload. So we are not talking about building a CI-CD pipeline for our customers. We are talking about a CI-CD pipeline for ourselves. We want to assure that every um, of our environment has the same settings, same configurations, and of course, same issues. Yeah? That makes troubleshooting from our point of view much easier, and bug fixing, of course, as well, because when you fix a bug, it will be rolled out automatically. But currently, we still have to work on that, so we, we are not finished with that. And of course, we have to uh, optimize our monitoring and support processes and, and testing per, uh, processes for that. Yeah, and as we are running on, on uh, Newton, um, 
we have to uh, deal with, with major upgrades. So we want to upgrade our environments at least to rocky or newer. The same is valid for, for um, Ceph. There we are currently running on Joule, uh, and we want to upgrade Ceph as well to the latest version. But that's still in, process, in progress. I mentioned it already. Um, we are changing our culture. We are changing our mindset. So from our point of view, it's, it's all about people. Simon Sinek says, uh, said someday, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And I really love that sentence because it definitely says what I think. Success is, from, uh, from my point of view, not only a question of technology, it's rather a question of uh, passion and people. And that's what we want to achieve and what we will achieve within our company. So we are hiring uh, people now for their potential and their personality and not for their skills. If the people do have the right mindset and if the people are open-minded and willing to learn skills like technology, that's something you could learn. But if they are not willing, they will not do anything. So we work also in, in self-organized teams and that's also pretty new. Uh, for us and for, for the people um, because in former days it was more like um, the department manager was entering the office in the morning and telling the people what they have to do in, uh, at that day and now they have to decide and they can decide by themselves what they should do and how they should do this. So we drive innovation, we will not just follow it. Especially in, in my team I'm very proud of that, and I'm very lucky that all my people I do have on my team are very open, and uh, we are pretty far ahead uh, compared to other teams. So we definitely work in, as a self-organized team. Me as a product owner, I'm only telling the guys what they should do, and they decide as a team, all together, how they do this. And we are pretty successful with that. Yeah, now I come to the end of my talk. So here are my contact details. If you need, if you want to have any further information from my side, drop me a line. I will respond to you within 48 hours. And uh, yeah, I'm open and I want to be, I want to um, be connected to other people and I want to work with, uh, with the community. Thanks a lot for your attention, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask now. Please use the mics so that uh, the questions will be recorded. Uh, just one question, something we are also struggling with. You said that you encourage your application teams to use multiple av availability zones in your regions. Yeah. How well does this work? So how many applications really do this? We do have currently a couple of applications. I um, don't know exactly how many these are. But yes, it's, it's hard to, to educate them and to train them. Um, but as soon as I uh, make it visible to them that it is uh, in their interest, because if, if they fulfill that requirement, they are able to deal even with multiple public cloud providers. And that's what I want to achieve. At the end, we, we are a tech company, a tech of uh, Metro. And um, I would like to have uh, that the, the applications within Metro are highly, availability, uh, hi highly available. So they, that they don't have to rely on any solution we provide. They should be independent from us. Okay. Um, uh, Thomas, you mentioned uh, that you guys are doing some bug fixes and stuff, and you're on Newton, which is obviously you know two years old release. How, how are you handling uh, the backporting stuff? Are you guys uh, just running a fork branch, or do you how do you how do you actually take things that are fixed later and then apply it to, to what you have um, downstream. Do you, do, you, do you have any details maybe on that process? It, it depends on uh, what kind of bug we hit. 
So um, the bugs we hit up to now, um, luckily we, we found a solution uh, by ourselves or there was a backport available. Um, but yes, we come now to a point where, the, where we do not get any support from the community anymore because um, Newton is uh, simply too old for that. And that's why we uh, want to uh, upgrade our environments to a later release because we also want to be part of the community. So in future, we want to actively contribute to, to the community. And that's something we can only do if we are, let's say, at least um, more ahead in, in, in terms of the OpenStack versions we are running. Um, I'm having one question to the, um, regarding your uh, CI CD for your, uh, your platform. Um, does this stop when, it, when the platform is installed, or uh, do you have uh, final steps like uh, running rally tests to uh, uh, do a load check on the whole system, how much can it bear, or something like that? Currently, we, we did, did not have implemented it, but uh, the idea is and the aim is that uh, we will run tests while deploying, and we will run tests continuously. So we want to have uh, tests running in our environments, uh, let's say, every couple of minutes. We want to, uh, um, we want to get uh, baseline data. We want to get performance, uh, to gather performance data out of, um, out of our environments so that we can see when there's an issue before it's really visible to our tenants. Hi there. I have a question regarding the Keystone setup. Do you have a separate Keystone for each of your regions? Yes, yes. Currently, we do have a separate uh, Keystone per region, per environment, and uh, currently this is a, 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 a this works with a local database. So we do not have uh, any integration into our centralized um, identity management system. That's also something we are working on. Um, you told that um, uh, you had problems with Silometer and gathering uh, usage data mm -hmm. from uh, your instances, from mm -hmm. your environments. Um, can you tell a bit more what is your approach now to get uh, these accounting data, uh, if you can share it? Sure, sure, no problem. So w with Silometer, we had uh, we hit a couple of times the issue that Silometer was running on 100% CPU load, or it was even consuming so much memory that the controllers were running out of memory. We fixed that actually by, by uh, developing a script, a Python script, which uh, gathers the, the needed information from the API. So we're just connecting to the API and, and requesting the data from the database. Just a follow-up question on that one. Which API you mean? Because we also hit the same problem, and essentially I selected a completely different tool because the RabbitMQ load and the Silometer was going here. So we used a gnocchi and it works for a while, but would be interesting. So yeah, it's, it's share the some open, more detail on that one. Yeah, sure. It's the open sec in, uh, API, and if you want to have more details, uh, the people from my team are sitting here, so they can definitely uh, in detail tell you how they implemented it. So come to us uh, afterwards, and uh, we will tell you, sure. You said about... Uh, Backward fixes, and uh, what's your procedure to deploy to production these uh, changes which you uh, move to a development uh, environment and farther to production? How you upgrade your cloud? Yeah, actually, we do have uh, a development environment based on hardware. We do also have, uh, we call it a, a pre production environment that's also based on hardware, so that's a not, not a virtual um, OpenStack environment. And uh, we will test changes and, and new features in the dev environment uh, while reinstalling the dev automatically every night. And in the pre-environment, we will roll it out as an upgrade so that we can see both behaviors. Does our change work either when we reinstall an, an environment and uh, does it work as an upgrade? And um, as far as uh, these tests afterwards are successful, then we will roll it out to the production environment. So at least th this is the idea. Um, 
how homogeneous is your infrastructure? So, um, as to say, for example, regarding the network infrastructure, up to now I've mainly heard about um, OpenStack and server installation. Um, does this CI/CD job also include, um, like, reconfiguring uh, the whole network? Like, uh, you made up, uh, uh, for example, uh, switching to an IP fabric, something like that, and your switches need to be reconfigured. You Test things like that too, or is the network a static thing that is there and uh, the underlay network the physical, or is it reconfigured too? Currently, we do not uh, know this yet, as we do not have this uh, up and running. But at the end, what we want to do is we want to test more or less everything over the time. So that this will also be a developing process. We have to. De we will start, of course, with, with some basic tests. And then we would develop new tests and, and stuff like that. Yes, we will also test uh, the, the network. Um, our CI/CD will not have any influence on, on, on our switch infrastructure. So, um, as I said, for, for us, even for us, IT is consumable like electricity. And I expect a network port to be consumed like like electricity. So, at the end, what what we are doing in, in the network from from the switch perspective. Our data center colleagues, they provide us a simple network port with a, with a base set of VLANs, and everything else is uh, handled by us in an overlay network based on uh, VXLAN and DVR. One question regarding the networking part. You, I saw that you are using VXLAN with the DVR. Yes. That means... Uh, you have a source routing for outgoing, but incoming is still coming through the L3 virtual router. Is that right? Your ingress traffic is still coming through your L3 routers. No, the ingress traffic is also coming to, to the distributed router. Okay. As far as I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, it be, well, I'm maybe on the older state, so yep. <laughs> that would be fine. And the another question was regarding, uh, you mentioned about the cloud or I saw a slide where you had a public cloud and also uh, integration on the private cloud. Can you some, shed some more detail how the integration is? Yeah, with the public cloud provider we are using, uh, we do have a, a lease line, so a, a, a dedicated connection to that uh, cloud provider. And that's how we connected it uh, to um, our intercloud backbone. The intercloud backbone itself has a uh, redundant connection to our metro backbone. This provides us uh, the, the flexibility um, to separate the traffic if needed and to have a dedicated uh, point where we can think about, even if we are not using it uh, as of today, to think about um, uh, IDS, IPS solutions and stuff like that. question was more regarding like what services are you using from the public cloud? So are you just using as a infrastructure so you are spawning some VMs directly using the OpenStack oh, okay, on the public sorry. cloud? Or what no, no, we are not using, we are using mainly VMs but not long, only VMs. So, so we are um, using also the, the additional features which are available in a public cloud provider, at a public cloud provider. And that's from our point the big advantage that we can use both. Um, what do you think about the different deployment methods on OpenStack? Would you uh, choose um, another method out there, like a triple O, um, uh, OpenStack on Helm, on Kubernetes, or um, would you do it the same way uh, via OpenStack Ansible? Have you any thoughts on this? Currently, we uh, are going for, for the same way based on OpenStack Ansible. But uh, yes, we do have always a look to these other methods, like triple O, like Open stack on Kubernetes, and see what will be the advantages. Did you do any evaluations? No, not now, not now. So uh, unfortunately, um, the, the team was not at the size um, that we had enough free time to evaluate it really. Um, but um, yeah, luckily we, we solved at least that issue, and now we have new people joined the team, and they have to get educated. And then we will, of course, have evaluate even such solutions. How did you convince upper management to move from a vendor solution to a fully entire open source solution, even changing like the distribution, because you're using Ubuntu now? 
And to be honest, that was easy because the upper management was requesting us to have a look at OpenStack as an open source solution to, build, to be able to uh, implement an in, internal private infrastructure as a service. So and we did not really have to convince them. What we must do, and that uh, will be a never-ending process, we have to prove that our solution is working, that, is, uh, that it is stable and reliable. Could you share us on one of your biggest challenges that you faced during the entire uh, this adventure? <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't get it. The biggest challenges that you thought in the network, storage, computing, orchestration? In the past. <laughs> get, get, yeah, get, get some hands on OpenStack. That was the biggest challenge. No, it, it was, yeah, the, um, getting a, a hands on, on the complexity of OpenStack, getting a feeling of OpenStack, the deployment methods. Debugging, of course, um, that was one of the biggest issues we had. You said about problems with uh, communication bandwidth be between virtual machines. Uh, do you use OpenV switch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. So we have uh, similar problems with similar bandwidth on. The yeah. For what what we found out there is a possible solution which at least could reduce the effect. Uh, so what, what we can see is uh, by using Open vSwitch, uh, DVR, and VXLAN, we do see a lot of soft IRQs uh, which are only handled by a single core on, on, uh, on the host, on the machine. And that core is running on 100% on load, and that's what uh, causes the, the limitation of the bandwidth. There is uh, feature, or let's say there is a feature on, on the network card available to have uh, the ability for um, transmit UDP tunneling segmentation. So it depends on the network card you are using. If the network card supports that offloading, and um, what we figured out um, is that it might also be uh, necessary that the operating system needs to support that. So we do not have a solution right now, but that's the way we are currently looking at. Any other questions? Okay, so then I say thank you for your attention, and uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>